a really experienced engineer might have looked at that and, and just knew what it was immediately. I am not a really experienced engineer. Hello, my name is Chad at Metalhead Maker on most socials. I am currently building a 3D printed guitar that has a ton of electronics stuffed into it to make it as annoyingly over the top as possible. Now I'm coming up on like two years of working on this pro Ooh, maybe it's three years. I hope not. Regardless, it's been a long time, but that's not for no reason. I'm basically trying to do what a lot of people say can't be done. Maybe that's not a fair characterization of the conversation, but there is a lot of really strong opinions about what it would take to make something like this work. And that's just the 3D printed stuff. That's not even talking about all of the electronics, which brings us right back to where we are right now. Back in May, I posted my last video on this project. I did not take a break from posting videos because I wanted to stop working on the project. I kept working that entire time. If you haven't already seen the rest of the series, might be a good idea to go check it out on my channel and then come back to this video because we're picking up pretty much where we left off. Still haven't figured out what to do about those LEDs that were creating audible interference. I mean, this the guitar was haunted. A really experienced engineer might have looked at that and, and just knew what it was immediately. I am not a really experienced engineer. I'm a hobbyist that kind of sort of knows what he's talking about. It's pretty clear based on the behavior that something about those LEDs is being picked up by the guitar signal. So the first thing that I tried was to tame the electromagnetic interference. I used this conductive copper tape along all of the insides of the guitar. So the electronics cavity and the pickup cavity, the cavity for the volume knob and switch and things like that. All of these cavities had this tape in there. Those are all grounded, basically a wire that, that connects them all to one central point of the guitar and the underside of the top of the guitar is also covered in that same tape so when you put that on there and as long as everything is touching properly you create what's called a faraday cage and if it's built properly these are super effective at blocking those external frequencies from getting into the electronics that you're trying to protect so in a nutshell the more isolated the electronics are from the outside world, the less chance that they're gonna get affected by something outside of that little bubble. If you have any familiarity with this kind of stuff, you may be wondering why I'm looking for electromagnetic interference when I am dealing with a circuit that is reacting to a signal with in its own circuit. You know, that is a really valid point. Hindsight is 2020, but I was looking for EMI for a reason. Guitar pickups, it's not just a clever name. They wanna pick up the electromagnetic interference or signals all around them, especially if there's something pretty close to the pickup that is emitting a signal like that. And I just so happen to have LEDs all around the guitar that potentially could be generating this signal. And I've got the microcontroller and all of the components on the circuit board that could potentially potentially be generating some signal, especially the ones that are digital signals, because those basically, in layman's terms, they kind of just pulse constantly or at different rates. And that pulsing is actually something that can be picked up audibly depending on how you've got everything configured. So my theory was that the all of these components all around the pickups could be somehow affecting it. And if we could shield them as much as possible, we would reduce the amount of interference. So how well did it work? <laughs> well, it didn't do a damn thing, but I wanted to try to do this as scientifically as possible, so I wanted to eliminate variables. I took the pickup out of the guitar, I took the circuit board out of the guitar, and then I built a little LED strip to connect to the circuit board that I could test individually with a Faraday cage just to see what worked, if anything. Oh, and so I built this Faraday cage Basically, it's just a bin that has a bunch of foil that is totally wrapped on the inside and it's got a wire attached to it to connect the ground to the circuit board. This is a inner box that just keeps it from touching the insides here because we don't want obviously positive and negatives to touch and things like that. So I took turns putting each component into that box. It made no difference at all, which sounds like a bad thing, but in science, a negative result is still a result. And that's when I had my next thought that this was not something that was around the pickup, but rather coming from within the circuit that the pickup was connected to. And then I got thinking, there's this thing called capacitors and they are used to help store energy temporarily in a circuit that kind of helps smooth out an electronic signal so you don't have any big spikes or dips in the voltage to make sure that, you know, 
things are happening as they're supposed to in an electronic circuit. Just to further drive that home, you can see when I click the switch in this diagram with no capacitor in it, the LED just turns on and off immediately. You can think of this LED as the stability of the signal. Turning it on and off so quickly is really disruptive and harsh to the signal, but if you just add a capacitor, the LED slowly brightens and dims, which is a much more smooth operation. Now that doesn't totally explain how that translates to creating a smoother and a quieter audible signal, but you guys aren't here to learn everything about electronics engineering, so that's gonna have to do. It's not gonna hurt anything, so I took what's called a little small ceramic capacitor, and on the circuit board, I put it on the five volt source near where the LEDs get their power. It didn't do anything. I didn't really have anything to lose, so I just kept going up in size, and then I switched over to something called an electrolytic capacitor, which is just basically a different type of the same component. I was shocked. It actually changed the tone of the screen, and that makes sense because it's gonna target a particular frequency depending on its capacitance. So I thought, well, what if I just added another one of a different size? And once again, the volume dipped in a different frequency. So I started to add another one and another one until I found the right mixture of capacitors to almost eliminate the sound. I will say that it's still there and there is more testing to be done, but I think I kind of fixed it. I'm gonna reserve my excitement until I get it all into the guitar and back together and I see that same behavior again. But as of right now, the majority of the sound is gone, so. I'll take it. Back to that whole EMI thing. When I run everything off of like a separate little power section, if I move that around, I notice that the volume of the noise remaining still changed a little bit depending on where it was. So that tells me that there is some level of EMI that's still affecting the noise. But as a byproduct, what I also noticed is exactly what everybody told me was gonna happen. If I'm powering the pickup off of the power that's coming from the same circuit that runs all of this other stuff, I'm gonna get interference in some way, shape, or form. I agree, and this is something I've talked about in previous videos, but my thinking there was that plenty of companies have figured out how to eliminate noise leaking into pickups and microphones, so I figured, why can't I figure that out too? But the reality is, if I just put the pickup on a separate battery, it eliminates even more noise. So basically we've got three different areas to target. One, the capacitors, two, EMI, and the positioning of things in the guitar, and then three, the power circuits. If I tackle all of those, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to get a reasonably quiet guitar. Maybe I wouldn't be using LEDs while I'm recording. This should work, which is kind of a big deal because you want to be able to make more than just screaming sounds with a guitar. So that's where it is right now. Next up, I'm going to be tackling the wire harness and all the wiring in the guitar and in the neck because it's kind of turned into a mess. It needs to get dealt with. I have definitely determined that this is a long term project. Just enjoy the process. Hopefully I'll have a guitar finished here in the next month or so, but time will tell. If you're enjoying the series, click the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will be back very soon with a new video. I promise if you need to catch up on the series at all, go check out these other videos. Should be on the screen right now. Thanks a lot. See you soon.